Solitary confinement has to be one of the most psychologically brutal punishments. As you'll see on this list, it's pretty varied. For some criminals, this is a necessary and sometimes deserving punishment, but for others, it's just simply cruel. But we're gonna start things off with Robert Maudsley. This guy is the longest serving British prisoner in solitary confinement. Robert Maudsley's story is uh, pretty chilling. He's known by a couple different fun nicknames that may give you a pretty good idea about the type of guy he is. Hannibal the Cannibal, Brain Eater. Yeah, wonder what he did to earn those titles. So in the 70s, Maudsley took the lives of at least four men, three of them in prison after being convicted for the first. Now Maudsley was obviously a dangerous guy, but in his defense, his victims were not the best people. In fact, many would consider them the scum of the earth. So uh, we almost have a bit of a Dexter situation on our hands, if anyone remembers that show. Regardless of how awful his victims were themselves, though, it was clear this guy was a bit of a danger to the other prisoners. And in 1983, he was placed in solitary, where he's been for most of his time behind bars. He spends around 23 hours a day alone in a cell. Oh, and the brain uh, eater nickname. Apparently, there's a rumor that he may have consumed part of the brain of one of his victims, but it's not 100% known if that's true or not. Next up, we have Charles Bronson. Not Death Wish Charles Bronson, uh, but the British dude. This guy is a whole different kind of character. His real name is Michael Peterson, but he's better known as Charles Bronson, named after the actor. This guy has spent a ton of his life behind bars, and he's kind of infamous for being a troublemaker in prison. He's been in and out of jail since the 70s for all sorts of stuff. He's got uh, quite the reputation. Bronson has spent a good chunk of his time in solitary, like a lot. And I mean, we're talking about a guy who's known for his violent outbursts and all that. So they kind of couldn't figure out what to do with him. So they just like stuck him in isolation. Now, being in solitary for anyone is tough. But for a guy like Bronson, who's already got a reputation for being a bit unhinged, it's a whole other level of crazy. He's become kind of a controversial figure because some people see him as a victim of the system, while others think he's just brought it all on himself with his wild behavior. Term in terms of what he did, he first landed himself in jail for armed robbery, but he also had a hobby of fighting prison guards, or just anyone, dude just loves to fight. If you want to watch a wild movie, check out Bronson starring Tom Hardy as the titular Charles Bronson, a pretty awesome movie. Next on the list, we have the Angola Three. So these were three guys, Albert Woodfox, Herman Wallace, and Robert King, stuck in the Louisiana State Penitentiary, also known as Angola Prison. They spent an insane amount of time in solitary confinement most of their adult lives, a little over 40 years. So Wood Fox and Wallace got thrown in solitary in the 70s uh, for taking the life of a prison guard. The thing is there are a lot of people who believe uh, they were set up because they were Black Panthers fighting for better conditions in the prison. Then there's Robert King, who was in solitary for 29 years for a crime he apparently didn't even do. He finally got released when they found out he was innocent. These guys endured extreme isolation in tiny cells, barely seeing the light of day. And in the end, Albert Woodfox got out in 2016 after striking a deal, but Herman Wallace died just days after his release. Next on the list, we have Stephen Slevin. If you wanna talk about neglect, this next case is pretty much the definition. His story is a bit different from the usual tough guy prison tales. Slevin was just a regular guy who hit a bit of a rough patch in life. Back in 2005, Slevin got arrested in New Mexico for a DUI. Instead of a quick trial, things got all bungled up. He ended up stuck in jail for nearly two years without even getting a trial. Just sitting there, waiting, very long time to be sitting around. And to make matters worse, he spent a big chunk of that time in solitary confinement, alone in a tiny cell for close to two years. Little to no human contact, no fresh air. By the time they finally like sorted out his case, Slevin, as you could probably imagine, was in pretty bad shape, mentally and physically. He later sued the county, and in 2013, he got a settlement for around 15 million bucks, but he passed away not long after that. All right, let's bring it back to the scarier side though, with Edmund Kemper, someone who is exactly where he should be, away from everyone else. So Kemper was this big, imposing dude. He's kind of like a real life Jason Voorhees. He stood at six foot nine and had a uh, very chilling intelligence about him. It's a bad combo, like, you know, ill-intentioned, 
and smart. Not great. He had a twisted relationship with his family, especially his mom, and this messed up dynamic played a big role in what he ended up doing. From 1972 to 1973, Kemper took the lives of several young women, and the details of the crimes are pretty horrific. He would do some gruesome stuff to the victims' bodies afterward. Not only that, but he also ended the life of his own mother and his grandparents uh, years before. Now, when they finally caught him, Kemper actually confessed to everything. It was almost like he wanted to make sure he'd never get out. He actually wanted the death penalty, but capital punishment had been suspended in California. So he received eight consecutive life sentences, and he spent almost his entire time in prison in solitary confinement. In interviews, he's talked about how he waived his right to parole because he believed he deserved to stay in that small cell. Next up, we have Thomas Silverstein. Silverstein was an American convict, very high profile profile inmate who spent a significant part of his life in solitary confinement. He was born in 1952 and he landed himself in prison for armed robbery. He spent the rest of his life in the slammer after a series of violent incidents while in prison. He took the lives of three prisoners while he was involved with the Aryan Brotherhood, beginning with a man named Danny Atwell. For this, he received a full life sentence. Eventually, he took the life of a prison guard, Merle Klutz, at the Marion Penitentiary in Illinois in 1983. After that, he was placed in solitary confinement and he would become one of the most isolated prisoners in the United States. He spent almost 36 years in solitary, mostly in a specially designed cell at the federal prison in Florence, Colorado, known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies. In his isolated cell, he had minimal human contact, limited access to the outside world, and strict restrictions on communication. Next on the list is Richard Lee McNair. This guy is crafty, honestly, kind of impressive. It's no wonder he's in solitary confinement. If they don't keep their eyes on this guy, he'll just find a way to slip away. He was convicted after a botched robbery. One man was severely injured while the other died. McNair was responsible, of course, and was sentenced to life in prison without parole but he managed to escape or come close to multiple times. His first attempt was in 1988. He managed to like actually wiggle out of his handcuffs using lip balm. Another time he escaped through an air vent and they caught him a few days later, but this would not be the final incident. In 2006, he pulled off like a Houdini level move by mailing himself out of a federal penitentiary in Louisiana. Yes, he got himself packaged and mailed away. Authorities found him a few blocks away, and this is almost even more impressive. He actually managed to convince them that he, like, he was just a jogger. For months, he was on the run, he used stolen identities, and even managed to make his way into Canada. But eventually, they nabbed him uh, in 2007. Jack Henry Abbott. This guy had a rebellious streak that landed him in some serious trouble behind bars. Abbott was a convict and writer. He had this intense correspondence with author Norman Mailer from prison, which turned into the book In the Belly of the Beast. Abbott was no stranger to prison. He spent most of his life there for different crimes, but he had this knack for just making things worse and worse for himself. His rebellious behavior got him thrown into solitary confinement more than once. Imagine being like stuck in a tiny cell all alone because he just couldn't play by the rules. Abbott seemed like he just couldn't help himself. This pattern continued even after his book got attention and people started talking about him. Just over a month after his release and the book is out and everything, in 1981, he stabbed a waiter at a New York City cafe, died of his injuries, and so Abbott was sent right back to prison and eventually took his own life in 2002. Next up is a guy who totally deserved to be isolated from the rest of the world, Robert Hansen. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this guy before. He did some incredibly disturbing stuff to women. The details are pretty horrific. He took the lives of at least 17 women and he'd take his time. He'd often let his victims run off into the woods, giving them a chance to think they'd escape, and then he'd hunt them down like wild animals. Luckily though, he ended up in prison. Now, here's the thing. He wasn't exactly Mr. Popular among the other inmates, as you can probably imagine, considering what he did. And because of that, they separated him from the rest of the inmates solitary confinement. And on one hand, yeah, this is a good thing. Solitary confinement does sound like absolute hell, which is where this guy belonged. But it is kind of frustrating knowing that he was put in solitary 
for his own protection. I don't know, it just seems kind of gross to me. And finally, we have Eileen Wuornos. Wuornos had a rough life from the get-go. Honestly, it would have been far more shocking if she grew up to be a well-adjusted member of society. Uh, she had a string of just horrible experiences that eventually led her down a dark path. Basically, her humanity was gone, turning her completely into this cold-blooded and remorseless person. From 1989 to 1990, Eileen went on a spree targeting men in Florida while working on the streets. She would shoot her clients and then rob them, often claiming that it was done in self-defense. Eileen spent around 10 years on death row, and during this time, she was housed in a small cell, isolated from the general prison population with minimal recreational activities and restrictions restricted access to the outside world. She finally died by lethal injection in 2002. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.